Hey guys, uh, it's been a while since I recorded the video, uh, but this is something that I really wanted to show you. So today we'll be discussing about uh, GitHub Code Spaces and uh, what is actually GitHub Code Spaces. Uh, I have an article already on medium.com, so if you don't want to read it, uh, GitHub Code Spaces is actually uh, a development environment uh, that's hosted in the cloud and uh, you could add github code spaces to any of your existing projects and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, for example if you search for github code spaces uh, you could see that uh, they are actually uh, free for uh, 60 hours per month uh, and this is by the way valid as of this moment so you see it's end of october uh, 2023 and why this is good uh, we have used this uh, in our academy. Uh, it's called FFDAO Academy. So if you're planning uh, uh, to start a career in IT, pay it a visit. It's really good. We invested a lot of time in it. And also, uh, currently, I'm going to use this for uh, my lectures at the local university. So I'm responsible for PHP tutoring, and uh, I'm going to use uh, GitHub Code Spaces uh, with the students. So... Uh, without uh, any further ado, how you could use it? Well, first, uh, you need to fork a repository. Uh, I have added this repository here. It will be added uh, as a comment in the video. It's also added in the article. The article will be linked to the video as well. Uh, and I have opened this in another browser. Uh, and I will fork it. So I'll fork this repository. So once I fork the repository, uh, waiting for this to finish. Uh, I'll have uh, a brand new repository uh, under my account. And when I have this, uh, I could go to code, then go to code spaces tab here and click on create code spaces on main. When you click that, uh, you get redirected to a new screen and you see a message that uh, the code space is currently being set up for you. And uh, usually it might take up to 10 minutes or two, three minutes, it depends. Uh, if you're just bored, you could see the walks. So you will see everything that is currently being installed for your code space. And how you could find more details? Well, uh, you could see in this repository that we have just readme file, license file, and then we have .dev container folder. In that folder, we have a Docker file, dev container JSON file, and PHP. In. So I will start with the Docker file. Uh, I will go through the files while we are waiting for this to finish. So uh, we start from uh, Debian, uh, Bullseye Slim. So you need to decide from which image you are starting and based on the image that you are planning to start, uh, you have some of the things already installed and predefined for you. Also, uh, we know what is the root user, and in here you see we are copying the PHP in your file. Uh, we are installing uh, different packages, uh, in this case using PHP 8.2, uh, and then we have curl, we have GD, ImageMagic, SKY, Zip, and etc. Uh, we make sure that we have the ini file, we make sure that we have xdebug uh, for the sole purpose of uh, this uh, university course. Uh, we are using also Node.js and then uh, we are adding the composer file. So uh, if you open again the repository, you will see that uh, first this is still installing and then uh, we have uh, the PHP file with some settings, you could modify them and then we have the dev container JSON, which is actually the the file which is responsible for the magic. And uh, you could see that uh, it's using uh, uh, Docker file in the build phase. Then uh, we have uh, different extensions uh, which are available for Visual Studio Code. And then we have different settings about which files are supported, which are not, which folders are excluded and should not be taken into consideration if you add any changes, etc. And uh, uh, don't worry if you have no idea what this is for. Uh, if you just uh, 
play with the dogs, go and treat them, uh, everything will be clear. Also, uh, there are a lot of examples on the internet that will really help you uh, and uh, you understand how this works and uh, uh, are there any issues. So as you, we are still waiting, it's now is the time for me to mention that uh, not everything is perfect. So uh, when this service started, uh, probably several months ago, uh, the service was not very stable. So when you started using it, uh, it was crashing or for some reason it didn't want to bind a certain uh, domain or the port forwarding was not working or the network had issues. But uh, uh, now uh, this has proven to be way more stable. So uh, I personally don't have any more issues with it. And I'm actively using this for our academy. And now I'm actively using this for the uh, university course of the, uh, and uh, I'm using that because uh, first it's free for 60 hours. So if you just think uh, 60 hours per month, this is uh, usually if you uh, study a course, uh, you have a couple of things per week or one thing per week, even less. So 60 hours is sufficient uh, for me to use it and show everything to the uh, students. So uh, still waiting here. Uh, we are uh, building the container. You could see what's the time. Uh, and uh, there is no point for us to just watch this to be installed. Uh, I'll just pause the video and then, uh, oh, we are actually close to finish. So. Uh, what you see here is uh, I, it's uh, installing now the Node.js. How do I know we are close to finish? Well, uh, if you open the Docker file, you will see that uh, in the Docker file, we are saying, uh, hey, install the Node.js. And once you install the Node.js, uh, install Composer and you are done. So uh, I'll just wait 60 more seconds. Uh, make sure that this is installed uh, because once you have this installed, um, you won't have to wait again for the whole process to finish. But uh, once you have this, then you, when you go to the code space, you have uh, a name of this uh, code space. You will know for which branch this code space is available. And then you will be able to click on the three dots and say, hey, uh, I want to open this in browser or open in Visual Studio Code or any of the others. Uh, I personally use uh, Visual Studio Code uh, or the browser. So in, for my exercises, I'm using always the browser uh, because by using the browser, I don't need any other software on the computer. I just need internet access and a browser. So uh, let's see, uh, it's almost done. Yes, it's installing Composer. So uh, this means that it's already on the last step. And now we see uh, Visual Studio Code uh, inside the browser. I see that I have my files. Uh, this is partially translated in Bulgarian, but you think here it's like, uh, if there are any problems, then uh, uh, just stop it. Then any debug console, terminal, ports, and comments. So uh, as this is going to be used for PHP, I'll just uh, create an index.php file. In that index.php file, I'll add some code like, hey, this is my first PHP return using uh, GitHub code spaces. And once I have this done, I could go to the uh, console and just say, hey, PHP, could you execute this? And you could see that it's extremely fast. It just executed. And the next thing that I'm also pointing in the article is uh, uh, if you're interested, uh, you could use and the build uh, the build in PHP server. So I'll just uh, clear the console and then initiate the build in server. You see that it's using PHP 8.2 for this moment. Then uh, the code space is saying, hey, you're running a server on this port. Do you want to open it in the browser? And when you click yes, what happens is now I have my own domain and also I see the code that I wrote. 
and I could make any changes to this code. And if I refresh it, you see that it's still being executed. So just by uh, clicking several times, I already have my environment for PHP and I'll be able to tutor my students. On the ports uh, uh, tab in here, you see that uh, we have port forwarding, which is uh, actually starting from port 8080. It's using the address and then it's being uh, bind to that. So when you access actually the domain, you see all the code that you have in there. And uh, guys, this is in short, really how you could use uh, uh, GitHub code spaces and uh, how I'm going to use it and still using it in the academy for tutoring people. Thank you.